Hey, 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 hold on, hold on. Gather around, everybody. Listen up. I got a story to tell. Tell, tell, tell. tell. Um, Bart, so you're in the educational field in Chicago, correct? And you're teaching how... How are you getting reaching the kids with the gospel? Because they're, you know, in the education field, we're in that arena. I know you can be, hands can be tied a little bit. So how are you getting the gospel to these young people, letting them know that there's, there is hope and, you know, not to give up on themselves and to come into the identity of who Christ created them to be? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think it's one we have to approach, as Rico said, with grace. And mm -hmm. I think the first thing is showing right? More, more is caught than taught. And so if mm -hmm. I can model that for students every day, I had breakfast with a student about two weeks ago and he said, Mr. Marchant, you had the verse written on the board every day. You prayed over us at the beginning of class and at the end, I, Emily, and that just that, right? He caught that. And so nice. I didn't realize it, but he caught that. So that's one more is caught than taught. And then I think too, I wish I had them with me. I actually give students a card, a two-sided note card that has identity statements in Christ on it. And if they're oh, wow. going through a tough time and I pray with them, I say, just remember who you are, right? Read this every right. morning, read it right before you go to bed, remind yourself of who you are in Christ and who he created you to be. So I think that's mm -hmm. number two. And number three, I would just say this, um, the Bible says they shall know us by our love. And so giving students an opportunity to serve other people, Today, we were doing food. We were distributing food to anybody who came through, homeless people. And I was looping in the 14-year-olds to come pray for these people, right? I'm like, let's just serve. Let's pray over people. Let's love, right? And if they can know us by our love, that's the greatest mm -hmm. testimony to Jesus. Amen. Now, is this a private school you? you're teaching at or is this public school? It's a private Christian school. So it's one oh, of two okay. non-denominational schools, um, high schools okay. in Chicago. So we have okay. the grace and mercy of mm -hmm. being able to just yeah. freely preach Christ and then crucify. Yeah. Got it. Man, that's Amen. Sweet. That's sweet. Man, you said Reach something the that youth. actually, Woo. he said something that actually our pastor, I mean, Jail's pastor was talking about, um, I want to say last Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. So we actually have a, um, a ministry where we, uh, go out on Saturday and give food to the homeless and uh, there's a project near our church. And so we'll go out and um, kind of give them some food and they can come and get clothes and jackets and all this kind of stuff. And one of the things the pastor was saying was how like, when we go out there and do that, we're not trying to get people back to the church. We're not trying to, mm -hmm. uh, Hey, come fill our numbers and this and that. Matter of fact, when we get out there, we hand, we give them what we give them. They, we have a card that says your love. We give them that kind of stuff and we pray for them. Like, and, and, and a lot of people, especially now are willing to let us pray for them. And, you know, I remember when I was, go, I would go out and kind of try to uh, evangelize or whatever uh, on the beach out here. They used to turn me away a lot. But since COVID hit, people, people <laughs> want a prayer. And like you said, it's just yeah. that love that we show was going to transform, transform them. And so, you know, if God meant for them to come to our church, they'll end up there. But for the most part, we just just giving back and showing love to them.